Good afternoon. Welcome to this meeting, Northern County Committee. I'm Councillor Paul Wynn, Chairman of the Committee. We are not expecting a fire drill today. In the event of an alarm sounding, please leave the building and gather at the front of the building. I'm obliged to inform you that this meeting is being live streamed and recorded. Could you also ask you to please ensure that mobile phones are switched off and ensure the volume on your laptop is muted? To ensure the members of this committee and that all points raised by the public speaking <laughs> are properly heard, I must advise you that I will not tolerate any disruptive behaviour. This is a meeting held in public, not a public meeting. And if such behaviour takes place and persists, I will adjourn the meeting. Members should ensure that they are present throughout the meeting, as you cannot vote on any item if you have not heard all of the debate. <coughs> And members and officers introduce themselves each time before they speak, so those listening know who is speaking. I shall ask members now to uh, the committee and officers to introduce themselves. So, Mark, would you kick off, please? Mark Jones, Vice Chairman, uh, Council of the Caboy, West Brent, and Salatin. Councillor Vincent for uh, Adam Mallow. Mr Chair, as I've said to you earlier, and I'll say now, um, I have a doctor's appointment uh, later on this afternoon, so we'll have to leave the meeting at three o'clock. Apologies to everybody for that. Joyce Farrell, Councillor of the Saint Oswald. Councillor Jeff Allen, um, Ellsworth. Uh, <laughs> Councillor David Asma, I'm Councillor for Penderdale and Shrewsbury. <coughs> Ted Clark, councillor, uh, one of the three councillors for the enormous Basin Hill column and Sutton Hall, with uh, special responsibility informally for Basin Hill. Councillor Edward Towers, uh, representing Wem, Webber and Brixton. And councillor Mike Isherwood for Oswald Street West. We also know yourself. Emily, would you like to start? Uh, I'm Emily Marshall, committee officer. Philip Mullen, you principal planner. Richard Denison, technical specialist planning officer. Miranda Garrow, solicitor. Thank you very much. Right, um, I just want to apologize for absence. We have two, Alex Wagner and Gary Burgett. There's different ways of saying that, nobody's quite sure about that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Item two, to confirm the minutes of the meeting held the 24th of May, <coughs> circulated with the agenda. Can somebody can propose to you? Second. 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 All in favour? I'll abstain so I'll abstain as well. Public questions, non received. Any disclosable pecuniary interest for anybody? No, OK. Right, item five, Station Yard, Highgate, Market Road in Shropshire. And presenting this is... Yeah. There you go. Richard. Well, well, that's right, Ted. My apologies, I should come in. Um, you'll have to excuse me, I've got um, some sort of heavy egg fever or something. Uh, just to, to confirm, it's not... A, Pecuniary interest, but I've got a particular interest in the uh, issue six on the agenda, and I'll, I'll step back from the proceedings whilst that is uh, deliberated. Okay, thank you, Kevin. Good afternoon. Um, in relation to this particular application, I was going to bring your attention to section three of the committee report. Um, this refers to it being a delegated um, decision. This is incorrect. Um, Parish Council have submitted a view contrary to the officer's recommendation, um, which included material planning reasons, um, which could not be overcome by negotiation or the imposition of planning conditions. Um, 
therefore this was decided that this application should be considered committee so unfortunately that was just an error in the report what the told to bring to your attention this is an outline application and it's phase two of the redevelopment of a redundant commercial land within the settlement of Pipegate, Pipegate which is located seven kilometers to the northeast of Market Drayton the proposal consists of a residential development of up to 10 self-built dwellings which includes two affordable units the application is only to consider the principle of development with the layout, appearance, scale, landscaping and access reserved for later approval. Phase, was, phase one was approved in November last year and comprised of four detached open market dwellings. This application included the vehicle and pedestrian access from A51, together with the provision of a new estate road along the southeast boundary of the site, which would serve both phases. A previous phase two application was refused earlier this year in March due to concerns raised that the development did not demonstrate adequate open space for future residents and that inadequate information had been submitted in relation to the adjoining commercial use, which had the potential to result in noise impact on future residents. The indicative layout, as indicated on the screen, indicates six detached dwellings and four semi-detached dwellings. Each dwelling would be provided with a minimum of two car parking spaces and private rear garden. The principle of development is considered acceptable. Pipegate contain, uh, forms part of an allocated community hub together with War and Islands Cross, with a potential of up to 15 dwellings under the Sandef plan, which was adopted back in 2015. The site also falls within the development boundary of the War Neighbourhood Plan, which was adopted in 2019 as a, and has a guide figure of 30 dwellings. The draft local plan which is emerging is providing a new guidance figure of 88 dwellings for the parish which consists of 58 dwellings which have previously been committed and 30 dwellings from the proposed war neighbourhood plan. The guidance figure for housing in this community hub has already been exceeded, although these figures are not maximum levels. The proposed application is unfortunately in conflict with part of policy HOU1 of the neighbourhood plan, which indicates providing up to 10 dwellings per development. Previously, obviously, we had the phase one, which is four dwellings, and this obviously application is for 10 dwellings. However, policy MD3, Delivery of Housing Development of the SAMDEV plan, does allow for an increase in housing supply if there are benefits arising from the development and that the, and the development is sustainable. This development will allow the restoration and enhancement of this contaminated and derelict site in which the developer will need to undertake costly remediation works. The development will be of a density and scale reflective of the adjoining residential development to the south and will be a sustainable settlement. The site is enclosed by mature landscaping along the northern boundary and will not extend the settlement into open countryside. The proposed development would provide 1,397 square metres of open space, which consists of a large open green area separating the residential development from the adjoining commercial operation, together with structural landscaping along the state road. The level of open space accords with policy MD2 of the Sandev plan of 30 square metres per person on the indicative layout of the number of properties proposed. A detailed noise impact assessment has accompanied this resubmission application. The indicative layout of the nearest dwelling would be over 37 metres away from the commercial building, whilst a three metre high acoustic wall is proposed along this boundary to minimise noise impact. Environmental protection have raised no objection on noise impact and a condition is proposed for the acoustic fencing to be installed prior to the first occupation. Officers acknowledge the parish council concerns regarding drainage, although Seven Trent Water and the council drainage engineer, engineer have raised no objection subject to pre-commencement conditions to agree, to agree foul and surface water drainage. Sill communication contributions would be used to provide improvements to the local drainage network in accordance with the local plan, place plan objectives. The development will not impact on residential immunity, resulting in any highway safety concerns or impact on ecology subject to safeguarding conditions. Uh, therefore, this application is being recommended for approval. Yeah. In relation to the site, um, this is the northern boundary with the landscaping um, shown on the um, skyline. Uh, the dwellings will be located behind this, so you will purely get glimpses of potentially roofs protruding from that. Uh, this is the existing entrance into the site. Um, the commercial building is located onto the right hand side um, together with the existing residential development on the left. Um, this is 
an example of what the site consists of. Um, it was the former station railway sidings um, many years ago and has been a derelict site um, and previously used as a builder's yard um, and hence officers consider it as a brownfield site um, and there has been obviously contamination on the site. This is another example of the, 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 the site within it um, with building materials and the overgrown nature of the site. Thank you. Thank you, Rich. <clears throat> We have two speakers and as Hester Lamb is going to read their comments out. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you, Chair. The first speaker's comments are from War Parish Council, who state, War Parish Council confirms its objections to planning application 2201789 Station Yard 4 and requests this is refused on the following grounds. The proposal is for a development of up to 10 dwellings. War Neighbourhood Plan 2016 to 2036 clearly states in policy HOU1 small scale developments of up to 10 dwellings per development. On the 8th of November, permission was granted uh, for four detached dwellings for the same site. Therefore, this should be refused with the maximum of a further six only considered in any application for this site. The War Neighbourhood Plan envisages that around 30 additional dwellings from 2016 to 2036 will be delivered. Since the plan was adopted in May 2019, there have been 21 dwellings either built or in the process or received planning permission. This does include the four already granted for this site. In total, since 2016, there have been a total of 51 dwellings built in War Parish, which is well more than the proposed in the War Neighbourhood Plan. The planning statement at 6.2.6 states, the site has pedestrian access along the existing footpath into war, which is less than a kilometre away along the flat footpath, which provides a number of essential day-to-day -day services. The distance is two kilometres with residents having to cross the A51 up to three times to reach the centre of war. It is not continuous. Parish Council are currently in negotiations with Shropshire Council West Mercia Police and HS2 Limited, having raised issues regarding health, safety and well-being of the residents in using the existing footpath. HS2 Limited have approval to use the A51 for about for circa seven years, allowing for 180,000 to 200,000 HGVs, plus other construction traffic during this period. The proposed entrance for this development also would be onto the main A51. The Parish Council are also aware that currently War Nursery and Primary School are awaiting confirmation from Shropshire Council on approval for funding for an extension to the school to accommodate the increased numbers of pupils due to the housing growth in the parish as detailed above. The Parish Council are also still concerned about sewerage network capacity as well as surface water drainage in War Parish. This was reported as critical in the 2012 to 2013 place plan with no work carried out to upgrade the systems and they wish this committee to take this into consideration when reaching a decision. This was also reinforced with a communication to Shropshire Council in August 2021 requesting that no further planning applications be granted until further full investigations are carried out. The Parish Council are still awaiting a response from Shropshire Council on this issue. We also refer to the previous planning application 2105785 OUT uh, development of up to 10 housing plots for self-build custom dwellings for this site that was refused in March 2022, with reasoning that it would be contrary to policy MD2 of the SAMDEF plan. There is insufficient evidence to demonstrate any changes to this previous application. The War Parish Council wish to remind the committee that the War Neighbourhood Plan uh, has equal status in the planning hierarchy with Shropshire Council's local plan, currently the core strategy in SAMDEF, and any decisions taken should also consider the plan and policies that were adopted by Shropshire Council in July 2019. So now we'll be back with another one to read out. Sorry, Miranda. Yeah, thank you, Chair. This next statement is from Mr. Gez or Gez Willard, agent. And he says, Members, this is a resubmitted planning application. The submission fully addresses concerns that your planning officer had with the previous planning application in respect of open space provision and noise nuisance. These facts are described fully in the officer's report before you now and in their clear recommendation for approval. 
You may also wish to take into account that the layout shown with this submission too has resulted from detailed discussions between your officer and the applicant. Again, as the report makes clear, this layout too is acceptable for the site and supported by your officer. The Parish Council raised concerns about drainage. The Drainage Authority has statutory responsibility for protecting existing drainage provision and meeting new demand. They have no such concerns. Your officer's report sets to sets to the matter clearly. It would not be reasonable to resist an application in the face of this advice. The applicant has already instructed lawyers to work with council lawyers to progress the section 106 agreement as described in the report. And if a favourable decision is taken today, then the hope is that this development can proceed quickly to the next stage. The applicants are the sons of the well-known local parish councillor Frank Woodcock. His untimely death left his family with the challenge of completing the development of this site that he had long championed. This application will be a key stage in completing the redevelopment of this site and delivering high quality, sustainably built local housing. My client hopes that you can accept the officer's recommendation and resolve to grant the planning position. Thank you, Miranda. <clears throat> Richard, do you want to make any comments for, about those statements? Um, yes, so the, the first point in relation to the drainage, um, the, the, we have obviously consulted Seven Trent Water, who's the local water board for this um, area. They categorically raised no objection to the application. Uh, they have an obligation to consider the additional demand on the existing system for the, for the proposed units. Um, and when they have that full application or the reserve mass application, which will indicate the number of bedrooms, the actual number of dwellings, then it will be for the local authority board to allow that connection. Um, they're not going to allow a connection to there, which would be um, unworkable. Um, and obviously we would have conditions on the decision notice to control that, and which would obviously liaise with the Seven Trent Water Board in relation to that. Thank you, Richard. Right, over to the floor. Any comments? Do I have any proposals, sir? <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Yeah, um, <clears throat> I'm in favour of this development going ahead because uh, it, it is a brownfield site. Um, it, it'll deal with um, the land that can't really be used for anything else, uh, and, and it, it is providing needed residential accommodation. So I, I move that we um, accept the officer's recommendation. Thank you, Mike. Yes. Yeah, that being the case, um, but reading the reports through um, and listening to the comments from the Parish Council, which I think have to be taken great credit here, you know, uh, because they're equal with as I've been hearing to the Planning Authority and Trotter Council. Um, there's a bit of an inconsistency, but 10 seems to be too much, too many for them. Four was last time, uh, and they seem to be accepting six, the dwellings as opposed to 10. Uh, and that being the case, also can add the, uh, they haven't uh, fulfilled all the requirements, it seems to me, according to the Parish Council, of what was previously asked for in the first phase applications. And I would like to see those reassurances on those matters uh, if we accept this one here now. Um, we have got the issue of the existing footpath. I'm not quite sure that, where that places us because there does need to be, if there's more population down there, it's a primary school or play screen that's going to be down there, then we obviously need to allow for that to be a safe uh, means of locomotion back into the centre of war. So those three areas I would want to be concerned on, uh, address on really, the no more than six possibly uh, existing footpath and the original requirements being fulfilled before any further building takes place. Thank you, Richard. Sort of... <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, 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 there is a, a footpath from Pike Gate through to Islands Cross, which then goes to war. Um, it's difficult to, to, to give an indication about distance. I measured one kilometre, Parish Council have measured two kilometres. It's as to where you measure that to. My distance was to the edge of war. The two kilometres probably is to the centre of war, where some of the facilities may well be. Um, the application is within the development boundary of Pipe Gate, which forms part of the, the, the war neighbourhood plan. Uh, so it, it is established that 
development will of some description go on this particular site. Um, you know, as you indicated, this is a brownfield site. Um, it does need to be redeveloped. There's going to be enhancements to, to, to the village. It will provide a mixture of residential properties. We've previously approved four large dwellings. This will provide a mixture and balance of, of, of dwellings in the settlement. Um, also, I'd like to just point out that we have actually received comments from Councillor Roy Aldercroft, which I should have addressed at the beginning of my presentation. So if I can just quickly yeah. get that. When a late representation came in um, yesterday, um, in summary, um, Councillor Aldercroft supports the, the War Parish Council statement, um, which, they, which Miranda has, uh, has previously read out. Um, it's indicated that there is limited development within the parish proposed. Um, and that the, the war neighbourhood plan provides a maximum of 10 dwellings per development. Um, and there's concerns raised once again regarding drains and the sewers, which probably also have obviously already been mentioned. Thank you, Richard. Do you want to come back then? Yeah, uh, Richard, can we just be reassured that if uh, we our officers put in caveats and appendices and all that on this next plan, that the previous ones are going to, if they haven't been finished and taken notice of before, what's the strength? You know, we put more in, they'll be actually equally carried out. I'm, I'm concerned about enforcement, really, I suppose. <clears throat> yes, I mean, we, we put conditions on planning applications. Um, obviously, historically, there's been an issue with We had a previous application that was um, approved a number of years ago, which we outlined in the history of the application. Um, works were undertaken regarding installation of drainage within the site, curbstones were put in, they were done unauthorised, we didn't um, have a discharge condition application to, to authorise those, so certain works have been undertaken on site. Um, clearly we have a, a recent full application, we've got this current outline application, both of which are going to have conditions regarding highway works, drainage works. Um, they will need to comply with those to um, allow the development to commence, um, before they do the works. Um, the issue we had on the previous application was that they didn't comply with them and therefore that permission had lapsed because they hadn't complied with the pre-commencement conditions. Okay. Vince and Dave. Thanks, Chair. I can't work out my buttons today for some reason. Anyway, um, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to second this. Um, I think um, Councillor Eichwood's uh, issue would, sorry, being told off uh, is quite correct. It is it is a brownfield site. Um, yes, it was uh, rejected uh, in an earlier application, but it was rejected for a number of reasons. And I do feel that the developers have done their best to work with officers, to listen to officers, and to um, to work through the the list of things that that weren't right. Um, we get many developers who come in and don't listen and don't care. And, they wonder why they go away with their tail between their legs. We can't deal with the uh, with the other four houses that were on the application. Uh, that's done and dusted. Um, and as has been explained by Richard, the um, the inadequacies of the bits that they added on, like curbstones, will be dealt with under this uh, current application. Um, so actually, it, it does seek to sort out some of the some of the things that were done that didn't have permission or weren't checked. Um, we can only deal with the application that's um, in front of us, uh, and I do welcome the fact that um, you know they, they're not doing um, ten separate houses uh, because um, two houses are four dwellings. So I'm 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 happy to support this. I I, I think if we um, if we want we couldn't we could we have to make a judgment on this um, that it's a it's it's, it's a, an application for ten dwellings, um, not for six. Um, you know, I think if we kick this application out, it's going to go um, to probably to appeal and the inspectors and the reasons we're citing for potentially not liking it, uh, I don't think would frankly be defensible because there is no, there's nothing really behind it to, 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 to back that up. So I'm happy to second this in essence. Thank you. Thank you, Vince. <coughs> David. Thanks. Um, I just Following up the themes of the last two speakers, I would want to make sure that under 6.7.5 in the report, it says that um, I recommend that both foul and surface water drainage are conditioned accordingly for details to be submitted and approved prior to commencement of works on site. 
given the concerns of the parish council, I mean, presumably they'll be all involved in that, and they will have to, they will be able to see that and and you know, make their views known. Um, in relation to um, compliance with conditions, um, we don't normally liaise with third parties um, in relation to that. So those details are available for parish councils, members of the public to view. Um, it is a, a condition that would normally be sent to the particular consultee that the experts, in this case, Seven Trent Water and, and drainage engineers, and it will be on their professional guidance in relation to, the, to their systems, knowing their capacity, knowing what the demand will be from the development as to whether that is acceptable or not. Um, Seven Trent Water, as I understand, are aware of um, War Parish Council's concerns regarding drainage. Um, whether they take those comments on board and what's involved, what discussion they've got, I must not, I don't know to date. Joyce, <coughs> Joyce. Thank you. Um, I know it's environmental protection that the designated the proposed development site is potentially contaminated. Um, it was done six years ago, the um, test itself, uh, and therefore it's uh, the potential risks will need to be re-evaluated. Has it been re-evaluated? Re what is the contamination in the land? And is it safe? Is it safe? Uh, at this point in time, we, we haven't had a revised contamination land report. Um, however, environmental protection were happy to impose a condition which re requires ground investigations prior to any commencement. Um, dependent on what is found, then there would be remediation works required. Um, reports would also be required once that remediation works have been undertaken to clarify that the land is safe for, for human um, use. Um, it's not uncommon where we have particular sites that we have um, pre commencement conditions regarding that, and the, the developers are aware of the requirements of that condition that are being proposed. Thank you. Mark? Yeah, I, I broadly support this. I mean, we, we've, we've had plenty of um, greenfield sites come um, through our hands in the last 12 months and building on green, not lovely green farmland, and then we've got a site here that's a brownfield site. Um, it doesn't look very attractive at all on the picture up there. Um, I've always, I haven't been to a wall very often, but I've always uh, regarded it as quite a posh area, and that doesn't look very posh there. So I think it would tidy the area up and uh, do the village of arms well. So I support it. Thank you, Mark. Right, Jeff. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, I, I'm leading to support it as well, but I do agree with what um, Councillor Towers has said, and, and looking at the Looking at the um, notification from Ward Council, one of the points they've raised is there's no detail of the way of six condition was originally given. Um, this is going to be covered in the six or SIL or whatever. Um, and I believe it is more really just objecting because they've got a neighbourhood plan stating a quantity of approaches. It wasn't the neighbourhood plan, or there wasn't additional property elsewhere to compensate. They probably wouldn't object. Is that so? Do you think? Yeah, just bring your first point regarding the section 106. Um, I mean, paragraph 7.3 of the, the conclusion relates to a section 106 being required to secure the affordable housing provision. Um, this will put this is um, in relation to this particular application and that application that was approved for four dwellings. Um, so the percentage isn't based on the 10 dwellings, this application is based on the 14. So we are getting a, a, the, the exact amount of affordable dwellings being proposed. Section 106 will also include the long term ownership, maintenance, and perpetuity of the open space which is being provided. Um, in relation to the war and neighbourhood plan, um, the figure does indicate 10 dwellings for development. Um, you can take this on board that this is a phase two and there's a, there was a phase one, then the total amount is 14. So it is four dwellings over and above their guidance. Um, however, Officers feel there are the mitigating measures regarding the brownfield status, it being a more sustainable development, um, and therefore approval is, is supported. Thank you. Just going to be including the section of the sections. You need to answer that. Uh, and one final point, um, just to, to, to clarity, um, within the committee report, um, the recommendation on page six relates to obviously um, granting of permission, but obviously that should have related to the provision of section 106. So I do apologise if it wasn't clear at the start of the report of that. It is now, I think. Yeah. <coughs> Thank you. 
Thank you very much. I think everybody's had pretty much to say. So if everybody has another thought, have it. Well, just, to, just another thought that I was reading through all this. Um, the, the open space, it's divided into two, and I quite like open space that's together. Uh, they sort of counted the verge as part of their open space. And I was a bit concerned that it wasn't a block because uh, open space to me means a play area and things like that. Uh, a verge is not exactly a play area. And I just thought that was possibly an, another weakness in this little one. I a lot of what you said, Vince, actually, I think, you know, I can I take it that you either have to accept 10 homes or none. You can't reduce it. That's fine. No, yeah. no. Okay, so the verge I was asking about. Okay. Um, in relation to the open space, um, the area indicated in green um, to the northeast of the pink area. The pink area is the application site itself. Um, that is the large area of open space that's being proposed. Um, you have three smaller green areas in the centre of the site. Um, the larger of the one to the top, so the, sort of the eastern element, um, that is where a tree is. That have been protecting that tree on the um, uh, photographs of the site. There was a tree with some fence, security fencing around it. So they're looking at retaining that. Um, the boundary hedging in trees along the southern boundary with the existing development is being retained and there will be additional tree planting along the road frontage. Um, once again, I mean, um, open space is open space to enjoy and open areas, but it can also be structural landscaping to provide a, a, a green sway through the, through the development. And I don't think that um, you know, we have a large proportion which is open, which is a usable space for people to enjoy, sit out in, youngsters can run around in, um, and officers believe that this is a, a good division between the commercial element and the residential, so it provides a good buffer zone. Um, once again, on a reserve maths application, the, the landscaping of that would be um, indicated yes. um, in relation to what provision. In relation to play area, um, on the Phoenix Bank site, which is the housing development to the, to the left hand, to the, to the south, um, there is a large open um, area um, and that does include uh, a play area. So thank you. So those blocks of green, those three patches of green are what they've been calling verge in their report. Yes, yeah. Right. Yes, yeah, that's correct. That. Yeah. It helps clarify things. Thank you. And just to show on the, the aerial photograph, um, there's a sort of a, a roughly triangular shaped area to the south of the red outline, which is on the adjoining um, site, uh, and there's a, a toddler play area on that. So it felt it wasn't appropriate to provide another toddler play area um, in close proximity. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. I think that comes to response. If we're all happy, we can take a vote. Do we have to do right now? Do we have to have a roll call since we're in the Thank you, Chair. Um, I'll call the names and please indicate for or against. Councillor Barrow? Or uh, Councillor Elner? Or Councillor Clark? Or Councillor Hunt? Or Councillor Jones? Or Councillor Isherwood? Four. Councillor Towers. Four. Councillor Vasma. Four. Councillor Wynn. Four. Yeah, that's unanimous. unanimous. Thank you very much. Right, so we should move on to item six, which is proposed residential development land north east of Grove Lane, Aston Hill. And Philly. Here we go. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Right, this application is made in full and proposes the erection of two number dwellings, detached dwellings and associated garages. Formation of vehicle and pedestrian access on land, which is currently residential curtilages, northeast of Grove Lane, Baston Hill, Shrewsbury. I say curtilages because they're curtilages to two separate dwellings. However, both are in the ownership of the applicant. Uh, members will be aware of the site, having made a visit to the site this morning, uh, also, I need to bring to your attention the update sheet where there's a discussion regarding one further letter of objection received uh, and also we've received one another letter of objection this morning. Neither raise any further issues to that as covered in the report. Application site is outlined in red and indicates the two separate dwellings. Uh, the, the one is here, and then the other one is the bungalow in the middle there. Uh, and the land proposed development forms part of, the, of these dwellings, existing curtilages. 
uh, the dwelling at the frontier is considered a non-designated heritage asset. However, as members have noted on site this morning, there's considerable vegetation, some of which is retained, and it is considered that there'll be no detrimental impact on the status of the building's uh, non-designated asset status in planning terms. Uh, the second dwelling is uh, a modern single-storey uh, detached bungalow. Uh, this plan shows where, where, where within both site, both the proposed dwellings are proposed to be located. The first dwelling, which we looked at this morning, is this one here, which is uh, a two story Donald type dwelling, uh, accessing off Grove Lane here and into the site there. And then the second one is Longest Road here, past the existing Bungo's Garage, if you walk past, uh, down in front of it here to the rear, and the second dwelling located in there which is also a domino style. Uh, the elevation plans for plot one, uh, two storey uh, with three bedrooms on the first floor, floor making use of the roof space. And uh, you'll note the modern glazing elements to the front and rear. Uh, these are the floor plans of this dwelling. As I've said, over two floors uh, with the three bedroom, with three bedroom on the first floor. Uh, this is plot two. Elevations similar in in uh, scale, but slightly smaller. And the floor plans. Again, three bedrooms on the first floor. Uh, proposed garages, one for each property. Uh, this is access in there, which uh, uh, we had uh, on site this morning, the South Council Highways Manager, who explained to members uh, the access uh, into both proposals and the fact that uh, he raises no objections to the application. Uh, this is a, an application showing the trees. We've had this tree survey being submitted. Our tree officer has, has looked at them. Uh, you'll note the oak tree in the corner here, which I passed comment about, as a previous application uh, on site has, was refused, uh, and that was for three dwellings, because uh, the third dwelling was up here. Members will note the site and the low hedge here with the one dwelling and how there's a tall hedge along here. I, I, I understand that the complete hedge all along is in the control of the applicants. Photographs of the site. Here's the first one. This is the entrance into the site of uh, Grove Lane. And this is the, the hedge is to be, removed, is to be retained uh, with the historic stone wall uh, as there's a pump path that leads at the back of this hedge. Uh, originally it was proposed to remove this, but uh, the applicants have since amended the plans and to ensure its retention and widening the access here by removal of uh, vegetation that isn't considered to be of any significance. Uh, this is the site of uh, plot one and note the the boundary hedges, which members have seen on site this morning, and the trees that are uh, on, on, on site. An example. Another one of the sites. And this is the openness at the rear, and the oak tree, as I, I, I touched on earlier. Uh, this is looking at plot two, where the oak tree is at the bottom of, as I've touched on, and again, more vegetation on site. Again, that's looking again towards plot two. Uh, that's the entrance uh, to plot two past the existing single storey garage, single storey dwelling, sorry. 
and the final photograph show an indication of what the existing single story dwelling looks like. As members will have noted on site and reading report, the site has a number of trees dotted around it. And uh, like I said, the uh, uh, tree officers be looking at them. There was a new, a new tree that was uh, referred to by the officer in his response to the application of which members had highlighted to them uh, when they were they were on site. Uh, I'd like to also touch on the fact that uh, the Basin Hill uh, Parish Plan is noted. How this has no planning weight in planning policy terms. Uh, as I touched on earlier, the application is a resubmission of a previous application for three dwellings on site that was con consequently refused as it was considered overdevelopment. But so the comments of the local parish council and local residents are noted. The site is not in either an historic or landscape designated area, and which will technically does represent backland development. The site comprises a large area of land that is mainly laid down to grass and not formal residential curtilage. In, 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 in that mean, I mean uh, flower beds and what you closely connect to the immediate uh, dwelling itself. Uh, the, the, the single story bungalow, as members will noted on the site, which it does stand in large uh, semi-formal open grounds. Uh, the comments is made by the Shropshire Council Con Conservation Officer are noted as set out in paragraph 416 of the officer report. Dwelling on the entrance to the site, as I've touched on, in which the African reside, is considered an undesignated heritage asset. There are a pair of Victorian cottages on the entrance to the site as well. Uh, these are not considered an undesignated heritage asset, but do have, I acknowledge, officers appreciate uh, charm within their own right. However, impacts on these both properties are considered acceptable. Uh, it is advised members take note of the overall scale and design in relation to the sound built environment as officers consider the principle of two dwellings on site is acceptable. I raise this because of the conservation officers comments are set out in the report. Uh, as far as the planning officers are concerned on balance, scale and design are considered acceptable. However, it is appreciated the design is very much contemporary rather than traditional dormer in style. I say this because the surrounding area has quite a mix of uh, dwellings, mainly of the 1970s, 80s era. Uh, the ones immediately adjoining are two story dwellings. Uh, however, further set back, there are dormer bungalows making use of the roof space, but obviously these are more of the 1960s, 70s era and not, don't contain the glazing uh, that uh, these uh, dwellings do as they are very modern in, in appearance with current trends and aspirations for um, uh, lots of light into uh, domestic commerce. I'm just finding the uh, example to, to make it sound clear with uh, the glazing on the rear and on the front and particularly above the um, uh, the comments by, as made by the Social Council Tree Officer are also noted, and which will indicate support the scheme. In principle, comments with regards to the U hedge is note, U tree is noted, and this was pointed out to me members uh, during the site visit. Officers do not consider this to be of any biodiversity significance, and as previously indicated, the site is not part of any landscape designation. It is also considered that further landscaping can, can be carried out as mitigation. Conditions as recommended by the Structure Council Tree Officer are attached as part of the recommended conditions as set out in Appendix 1 attached to the report. I'd also like to point out that in paragraph 6.13 of the officer report, it refers to self-build. Whether self-build or not, that makes this makes no difference to the principle of the development as proposed. In conclusion, the principle of development is considered acceptable, and we shall note in the conservation officer's <laughs> comments on the contemporary design. On balance, the recommendation is one of approval, subject to the conditions as set out in Appendix 1. That concludes my uh, 
presentation on this application to the chair. Thank you. Thanks, Philip. Right, we have several speakers on this. And the first one is against it's Brian Bishop. Would you like to come forward, please? Yep. Are we going to speak round? Are we speaking from here or are we going to. Oh, the there. Got okay, all right. Okay, yes. Right, you have three minutes to start. We start speaking. Do you want a 30 second warning? You've got to clarify three minutes. Pardon? Three minutes. Three minutes, yeah. Thank you. I just like that's microwave timing and a slow cooker speech. And that's why. Okay, that's good. Thank you. And would you like the warning in 30 seconds? Yes, please. Yes, yes. Okay, we'll, all right. we'll have the drama before you get stuck on the roundabouts. Thank you. Right, thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillors. Brian Bishop are representing 30 properties that surround this site. Um, I have to point out a miraculous transformation. This was rejected by a senior officer finding 46 areas of public concern. Our new officer, despite 90 objections, now submitted and find only 16. How has this miracle been achieved? Or is it, as your planning issue booklet, as uh, clearly revealed, uh, full of contradictions? A lightning summary. On site, from overbearing in size and scale, these houses are now even bigger, but are renamed conveniently as bungalows. The style was at odds with the surroundings initially. The latest vernacular design is still classed by the constant team as far too, I quote, dominant and disproportionate. Previously, the buildings were sited too close to the boundaries. Even now, plot one has not moved one centimeter, Plot two has moved even closer to the boundary. Privacy and amenity. This was rejected, firstly, to preserve a private and a family life. But now, as you've seen displayed, the viewing galleries are still looking down into most rear gardens. On access and road safety, the emergency and service vehicles are still unable to enter the site. There are major public safety issues that remain. The Highways consultee describes the refusal to remove their old garage as a, quote, lost opportunity. Despite serious pedestrian safety issues, having vehicles reversing past the right of way exit still exists. There are some guilty parties here this morning, I think. Incredibly, the case officer concludes all is safe. We should be grateful that all councillors have returned unscathed on heritage. The access road is now rerouted with even a greater impact upon the wildlife corridor. Why not move away from the hedgerow? Anybody spotted the reason? The wildlife trees are totally devastated, but ridiculously now providing apparently a few nesting boxes counts as ecological gain. 1,000 years of history is dismissed by the officer in two lines as no problems, whereas the consultee insists that no approval before a program of archaeological work is received. On trees, between 21 to 33, 33 mature trees will be sacrificed. Nine will survive. Two of the ewes are of major risk. A mere 10 replacements are planned, yet the officer calculates this as a net gain. Therefore, the trees consultee demands, I quote, substantial mitigation or the application must be refused. Historical flooding. A total denial, even the officer reports no issues. This is news to your Shropshire flood risk manager. John Bellis came on site on the 8th of June. He interviewed residents. He received 53 submissions. Thank you, Mr. Bishop. I'm afraid three minutes. So. Thank you very much. I just say a few. Well, I'm asking. Thank you. Uh, I would welcome any questions. I'm afraid you don't like to do that, Mr. Bishop. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Right, uh, right, we have based in Hill Parish Council. That's the mark on the board. Let's come forward, please. Thank you, Mark. Three minutes. Would like to finish the second morning? Uh, that's fine. That's fine. Okay, thank you very much. Good morning, Chair. Well, good afternoon, Chair and Councillors. Based in Hill Parish Councillors continue to object to the housing development in this area. As a consultee, we have objected to the earlier application that was validated in May 2021 and, and to this revised scheme. The issues the members are we have our concerns are about are set out below. Surface water drainage. 
There is concern made by residents of neighbouring properties over a natural spring in the vicinity of the site, which may be affected by the removal of green area, which is part of the natural land drain is currently in place. This issue was raised by Shropshire Council as part of the earlier application objection. Part of the development is with an area required to maintain an adjacent water course. There is no indication in the revised application of this issue has magically disappeared. Protection of ecology and affected hedges and trees. Potential harm to development could bring about during construction more long term once the development is complete. Shropshire Council's rejection of the early application states there are unacceptable impacts on the amenities of the, of the occupants of an adjacent residential dwelling. Again, it's not clear how the revised litigation, this how the revised application has mitigated this issue. Mm. Site access. There is concern of neighbouring properties over the current issues encountered by larger vehicles using Grove Lane. And this issue still exists. And we do ask that if permission is granted, please consider conditions to minimise disruption while construction is underway. But when complete, that emergency service vehicles, as well as refuse collection, can reach all the properties safely and unhindered. In addition to these objections, the application does not pass our parish council planning policy as follows. We oppose property being built in gardens. We believe this is undermines the character of the village, as well as encroaching on environmental corridors. The environmental corridors are complex ecosystems that provide an avenue for wildlife movement. Checks of natural resources and green space buffers for humans. We ask that this committee does not grant permission for the reasons outlined below. Thank you very much. Right, uh, Councillor Ted Clark, would you like to speak? You have five minutes if you wish. Chair, I'll take the consideration last that. Um, first of all, can I, I thank the officers for? Um, arranging the site visit. I think that was particularly important. At least everybody's had, uh, everybody here has had a good opportunity to actually look over the entire site. The second thing that I I'm, 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 uh, feel obliged is the wrong word, but that, that, that I'd like to raise is just uh, to congratulate the objectors for their, uh, for their vigour and the comprehensiveness of, the, of, the, of their uh, objections. Um, I've nothing further to say on this. Everybody has actually seen the, the site this morning. I hope we'll take uh, the objectors' decision um, comments into full account as a result. And uh, I trust uh, you will you will make an appropriate decision. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ted. Okay, we have the agent now. Amy Henson, would you like to come forward, please? Same as before, you have three minutes. Would you like a third second warning? Yes, please. Okay. Thank you. There we are. Get that right. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak this afternoon. Um, this application is seeking permission for the erection of two family homes, which will enable the applicant, Mr. Foster, to move into a larger home. His mother and father moved back to the area from Hanscroft and his sister to move into number 10. Mr Foster Senior owns the whole site, including the bungalow and the driveway. We can I'm sure we can all appreciate how hard it is to get onto the housing ladder. Number 10 Grove Lane has one bedroom. Todd's daughter is three years old and she doesn't have her own bedroom. This is the perfect solution for them and will allow a young family to remain living in the area amongst their friends and family. Moving on to trees, all category B trees and existing hedgerows along the boundary will be retained. The site is currently well screened from view and it will remain so. The houses have been designed to dormer bungalows and significantly reduced in scale to the previous application, having taken on board the comments made previously by officers and neighbouring residents and the parish council. Plot two, for example, is orientated sideways to neighbouring properties to prevent issues regarding overlooking spots of privacy from arising. Each house, including number 10 Grove Lane and the existing bungalow, will have a good sized garden and garage parking area. The designs are a contemporary twist on the traditional dormer chalet style bungalow that you come across in the surrounding area. The use of glazing makes best use of available natural sunlight and we've ensured that no habitable rooms will overlook any neighbouring properties. Access 
placement of the site has been altered to ensure that large vehicles, HTVs and fire engines can access each property, turn around and leave in a forward gear. This is shown on the submitted tracking plan, so please check that. We've also approved the driveway to number 10 so occupants can park and turn around within that site. No one will be reversing out onto the adjacent highway. Refuse lorries will park in the entrance to the site and collect the bins from the bin store. This is because it is a private driveway through the site and this is normal practice of all private driveways to developments. We know the tree officer has commented on the potential impact on a yew tree to, number, to prop number one. The tree is northwest of the house and the patio is sh as shown may affect up to 11% of its root protection area and 1% from the actual build of the house. The affected area is well below the regulated standard applied to development within root protection areas and should not be an issue for the future survival of the tree. There will always be an area of the garden receiving direct sunlight. So again, there should be no impact upon that tree in the future with regards to shading. Drainage, all consultees are happy with the proposal and have raised no significant concerns. We must stress the applicant is keen to retain as many of the trees and hedges screening the site as local residents are. This is because it offers privacy to them too. Please don't forget. We very much hope you can support the application and thank you very much. Very well, Sam. David, thank you very much. Okay, uh, Philip, you'd like to make any remarks on those comments? Yeah. Thank you, Chair. Yeah. Up over there, Ted, while we yeah. keep yeah. Thanks. Thank you very much. Mr. Chair, just for Philip's comment, I, I, as I said at the beginning, do have to leave it to me. I'm not going to be here for the vote, so I will take no part in the debate. Okay, thank you. Leave a mess for everybody else to clear up, otherwise. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, I'd like to comment on a couple of issues, really. First of all, by the uh, the first speaker. Uh, the, that it is quite correct, a previous application was refused, and it was a different case officer. Uh, it was a different case officer. However, uh, that uh, is irrelevant. Uh, we act as a team, we discuss applications, and I can assure you this application has been discussed extensively amongst officers. In fact, I think this morning was my third visit that I made to the site. I made them as a result of the previous application, where we look, uh, we looked at, I looked at the site with a colleague and agreed with his recommendation that that application should be refused as it was over development. As the agent has pointed out, they've worked with us to address the issues raised, which has led to the um, application before you. I accept the design of the dwellings is um, subjective. Uh, it's more contemporary in design. However, I think that plan is shows you a good indication of the, of the scale of development and layout surrounding it. Uh, it is not considered overdevelopment when looking at the built development that in which it's located. Drainage have raised no objections and Seven Trent were also consulted. They also raised no objections. You'll see the list of conditions attached to the report include uh, conditions in relationship to drainage. The situation of the trees was discussed extensively on site and uh, the tree officer raises no objections. I point out to you myself with what we considered were the important feature trees. Then you will note there was a lot of garden specimens uh, on site uh, and particularly on plot one, uh, the landies as well as at least three new trees. The yews were being retained and then on the rear side there was a, a number of dam damsel or plum specimens in the middle of the site. Uh, the old tree to the rear of the site, which is perfectly marked on that plan in the corner there. Uh, you'll see there's no development anywhere near that. That tree is retained safely. Uh, the second most important tree on site was a copper beech tree here. Uh, that's uh, not going to be impacted either with the development other than the construction of the road. However, these issues are covered with conditions if members are mindful to support as set out in the report. Finally, uh, the Structure Council Highways Manager was also on site this morning and uh, he raises no objections to the amended plans received. Uh, this matter was also extensively looked at and viewed by members. Uh, and one thing I needed to touch on with, with the boundary, members will have noted the, the, the 
boundary treatment and how well screened the site is and how this site here has a dwelling where it has a low hedge and yes, then uh, obviously you can see that there was a potential impact on these properties here by dwelling being built in here. However, I understand the boundary hedge all along here is in the control of the applicants. However, its maintenance is a civil matter between the applicants and uh, the people concerned. Uh, finally, uh, the parish council speaker referred to a uh, construction management plan. Uh, members, please note condition number 15 does recommend a construction management plan to be attached to any decision notice if mindful to grant. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. Before I stop, I've got any questions or points. Um, very good site this this morning. I thought it was uh, very influential on what we're looking at today. There's one point from the first speaker today overlooking on plot two, where I thought the house was facing south, which is up the garden, facing south, and there's no possibility of overlooking any other houses because the high hedges on the south perimeter. It's not looking north, it's looking south. So there can't be any, any overlooking, as the first speaker said. Right. Where you are now, yep. that's the way it faces. Yeah, it west, isn't yeah. It? West. And there's no houses up there. It's west. It's west. West. It's facing west. 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 Facing west. I'll show you the elevation pattern. Yeah, yeah. So it's not overlooking the houses no. on the right, on the east right side. Uh, there's the, the west elevation is this one here. So obviously the rear is the east. And then these are the two side side elevations. And you're quite right in what you pointed out about the hedgerows. There are no first floor windows in either side. Thank you. I just wanted to point that out before we went any further. So I think that's quite a valuable point. OK, okay. I'll to the floor now. Mark? Yeah, uh, no doubt I'll reiterate like everybody does. It was a good site visit. We saw the high edges around the site. Um, we saw where quite a few of the neighbours lived uh, we, at a tiptoe. I will go on tiptoes to try and see see them through a rather thick hedge. I also noticed driving up through the main um, section before you turn right into Grove Road, there's a lot of Victorian houses. And I noticed a lot of those have got houses built in their gardens quite tightly too. So it, it does, based on like most towns and villages, does seem to have infill built in various places. I um, I was so keen on plot one, but it's in his garden, which was the garden, but that's, that's he, he's going to have to live with that. I thought plot two was was a good plot to have a place uh, with the access road that would take one of the um, one of the um, not the, the garages down. So I think there's, there's reasonable access there. And as um, I think one of them raised the point about the um, the, um, the the dumper wagon, not the dumper wagon, the um, refuge wagon. Hopefully they'll have, have a store at the front of the properties, which they'll be able to drag the um, the bins up to, so it's easy to get access for the uh, the wagon. Um, I think overall I can't see too much of a problem with um, privacy for the neighbours, so I, I, I'd support it and I'd go with the officer's recommendation. Thank you, Mark. Chair. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, I was at another meeting this morning, so I was unable to go to the site meeting, and I just wanted to get some double check two things or three things. One was going to be object, one was going to be overlooking issue because because the people over here says there were overlooking issues, then the agents there isn't. If you, you're happy there isn't, then there isn't. Okay, so I'm happy with that one. My other concern was highways, um, emergency vehicles. Can they or can they not turn? That is unclear. These people say one thing, officers say another. And the, and the final one was flooding. Has that been considered if there are over 50 comments from people to a drainage officer? That's worth noting. Looking at. That's oh, a clarification. That's because I wasn't there. Okay, we'll just a couple of those points. There's no overlooking at me, I can see. No, we were to uh, no overlooking drainage. Uh, there's no objections, as I pointed out, from our drainage uh, experts or from Seven Trent. Uh, we've recommended conditions if you look through the appendix, appendix one. And highways, uh, yes, uh, it, it's it's considered acceptable in relation to emergency vehicles. And as the agent quite rightly pointed out, it will be a private drive. There will be a bin storage collection area 
where the, where the occupants of the dwellings take their bins to be picked up by uh, the bin, bin lorry. Uh, this is a typical and, and a reasonable solution to that point. So therefore, the issues you've raised, uh, no, no concerns from offices. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Colin. Um, well, I will second this uh, to my officer's recommendation. Um, it was an excellent site visit. I can't see overlooking. They've met all the problems as far as I can see. So I'm happy to, to second this. Edward. Before we vote, uh, Mr Chair, just a couple of things. Uh, the turning circle at the top, this this, this emergency vehicle that you just mentioned, cast on them. Uh, there's a garage going to be taken down, or at least three parts of it, as I understand. Um, uh, it would be helpful just to someone just to stand there and just say, well, that's where it will turn. I, I, I can't quite. It's very tight down there. And there will come possibly uh, occasion, not only just bin lorries, that's the regular fortnightly visit or whatever it is, a weekly visit. But, you know, if a fire engine needs to get down or uh, an ambulance, I mean, is there a place to get right to the bottom, to that bottom bungalow? Uh, I'd like that just clarified, really. Um, there was no objection to racial residents. Um, there's no TPOs in these trees, but they have, the applicant was quite at pains to point out they have no problem if TPOs were imposed. Uh, that would reassure possible people possibly, but not be commented. The other thing I picked up as reading through was the archaeological details, uh, going back to sort of prehistory, as it were. Um, I'm reassured there that uh, there will be, um, as the site is uh, developed, if this goes ahead, there'll be people to uh, alert to anything that might come up and stop the development until sufficient things have been taken. So really, I suppose, uh, could TPOs be put in by this committee or not? I don't know. And turning circles. OK. Sorry. Yes, yes, thank you. Uh, right. First of all, in relation to TPOs, uh, we have, in fact, it was me there I admitted, uh, when we were on site at the first site visit, uh, looked at, I've contacted the tree officer to look at the oak tree in the corner as that's the only native tree there on site, which is considered worthy of a TPO. I understand the tree team are looking into this. Because uh, it, it, it isn't in a conservation area, therefore technically it has no protection. So that is being looked at. The other trees internally on site are not considered worthy of TPOs. Uh, archaeology, uh, you'll notice there's a condition recommended in uh, the uh, condition number 11 uh, it, it, with regards to archaeological works on site. And so, with regards to emergency vehicles, I understand uh, it is considered acceptable. Hi our highways raise no objections. And uh, the case officer has looked into this with uh, fire engines and emergency vehicles, and it is considered acceptable. Thank you. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you, George. Just uh, something to note um, the construction traffic management plan, when it is done, I would like to hope that um, included in that will be, should this go ahead, that any mess on the road will be cleaned up on a daily basis. <laughs> and also, um, besides that, I think it's um, vitally important that the times are restricted uh, so as not to inconvenience residents, uh, so that it's not early morning or late evenings. Thank you. Would you like to look? Uh, yes, and I consider it if they're not already in the, in, uh, in the appendix as listed as conditions, uh, they can either be incorporated into existing conditions or an additional condition. Uh, the one you, the one you said about work it works on site. I'm just checking. Is there a condition on? I I, I haven't got that photograph. Now they can remember every condition we've attached. Okay. I notice. Uh, is there one there or not? Uh, and yeah, while I'm looking for this, uh, we can put an informative on regarding mud on the highway, and uh, that uh, there's also separate legislation if we feel if it was completely unreasonable. With the 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 dirt uh, going onto the onto the highway, but like I said, we either put in the form you know or, or include that as part of the construction management plan. I cannot see it. One with regards. Uh, wait a minute, it's more. Can... Right, 
Right, okay, well, I'll look into that. And if, if members are mindful to support, we can add a condition with regards to uh, working times on site. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. very much. Mike? Thanks, Chair. Yeah, um, with regards to emergency vehicles, I think um, it was pointed out that this would actually improve access uh, to the existing number nine dwelling, um, which at the moment um, fire appliances would struggle to, to get to. Um, so this would actually improve the access for emergency vehicles. Um, as for Grove Lane and construction vehicles and um, all the different trades being on site, notice there's no footpaths at all um, down the, the lane. Um, so I, I also think that we should try and prevent them parking along the lane because it would really restrict access for uh, anyone on foot um, and also, um, you know, impede larger vehicles get, getting in and out. Thank you, Mike. Can we do that, Philip? Uh, the construction management plan condition 15 would cover that. Okay. Right, if we're all sort of happy, we'll go to the vote, which will be a roll call vote again. Thank you, Chair. Um, so we've got the proposition which has been proposed and seconded. Councillor Barron? Or uh, Councillor Elner? Or Councillor Jones? Or Councillor Isherwood? Or Councillor Towers? Four. Councillor Rasmus. Four. Councillor Wynne. Four. That is unanimous, Chair. Thank you very much. Okay. So, uh, right, so that has been passed. So now we shall move <coughs> on to our <coughs> roundabout. Which we've got several of. We'll just get a few seconds for the public to uh, okay. leave. Thank you very much. Did anybody hear that rude comment? Yes. What do you say? What a bloody lovely bar. Thank you. Maybe please for this. And he's told me that he made it as a couple of Typical of how he's, how he's acting with a case officer to a handling of the application. I'm glad we had a slight visit this morning oh. and that's most valid because it wasn't what he was talking about. Right, shall we move on to item 7, roundabout junction A41 and the A525, which is on the west side of Bridge Village. Thank you, this application is one of six similar applications which are being considered this afternoon for the erection of freestanding sponsorship signs on behalf of Shropshire Council. Each sign will be identical and measure 1.2 metres wide by 0.5 metres tall and will be constructed from steel with aluminium power coated finish with vinyl graphics applied. The signs will be mounted on two posts which are just under one, just under half a metre tall. As an example, I've made a three metre mock up. Yeah, just to show you the sort of the size of the sign that's going to be proposed. See how huge that is. The signs will be positioned on the roundabout facing traffic approaching from each direction. All sponsorship plaques will be simple in design and will be for a minimum period of 12 months. Local authority roundabout sponsorship or advertising schemes are now quite common practice in the UK and Shropshire Council would like to offer local businesses the opportunity to advertise. Roundabout sponsorship is typically used by small to medium sized local businesses to raise their profile. It serves as a cost effective way for them to promote themselves in high visibility locations for considerably less money than would otherwise be possible, helping to boost the local economy. The income generated from the advertisements on highway assets will be reinvested into the highway network. In relation to this current application, the existing roundabout is located on the Whitchurch bypass on the western edge of the town at the junction between A41 and the Rexham Road. This roundabout is opposite a petrol station with service station facilities together with a new Aldi store and large freestanding advertisements close by. The proposed new signs will replace four existing sponsorship signs which are located on the round rate and are unauthorised. Though existing street structures, including road names, directional signs, chevron barriers, slug posts, and freestanding signs close by, um, officers consider that the development will not result in any adverse visual impact whilst the highways manager has raised no objection on highway safety grounds. 
the application has been recommended for approval. <coughs> Thank you, Richard. Yeah. Um, the photographs just show the examples of the of the roundabout, um, showing the large sort of black and white chevron signs. Um, photographs are quite small, but there are small, low key um, advertisement um, signs already on the roundabout, um, and they will be positioned on the approach to the roundabout. So as you approach the roundabout, they'll be in front of you for, for the drivers to see. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Yeah, we got several of these. I'm not sure if you go through all that blurb. No, no, I don't. I would. Do you mind to? I mean. I'll, yeah, there's no speakers. I'll propose this one. I'm happy to go ahead, so I'll talk about recommendation. Uh, on big roundabouts, I don't have any problem. So, and um, there's a nice caravan site just down there, actually. <laughs> <laughs> right. oh, oh, yeah. 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 I'm happy to second. Thank you. 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 Thank you just too many signs. I had to hear you say that there'll be signs that are not got permission, but going to be removed. So that satisfies me quite a bit. Uh, but I'm, you know, we do need to support local businesses. And I'm happy that the money goes into the finance, into highways, because we need to improve our highways across the county. So that's good. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Are we happy? Yeah. Uh, oh, sorry. I have to show of hands. All those in favour? Oh, you have a second. Oh, you just did. Yeah. Yeah. All those in favour? Unanimous. Okay, all right. Oh, it's great. Hmm? It isn't unanimous. No, it's oh, sorry. Go on. <laughs> no, oh. well, I, I was going to speak, but next it, it's too late now, isn't it? So, yeah. Um, <laughs> have a chance next. So, okay. Okay. so how would you like to go? Would you like, to, like to vote against? Thank you, Greg. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll move on to the next one, which is. What number is that? This is obviously same type of application, same signage. There's no difference in the in the size of it. This is at Priest Heath, which is a, a large roundabout at the junction between the main A41 and A49. Um, it's next to a large service station, uh, a large truck shop, uh, truck stop. And a number of um, uh, takeaways and cafes. Um, it's within the settlement of Priest, um, and it proposes three signs on the approach roads. Uh, three signs are being proposed on the on, on each approach road to the roundabout. Um, once again, officers have no issue about visual impact, and the highways managers raise no objection on highway safety grounds. Um, this application is also being recommended for approval. Thank you very much. Right, yeah, I'll move to fly now. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I'm against these on principle. I just think that any, any extra signage um, right in the centre of a roundabout, taking the driver's attention, you know, you say it, it's there to be looked at by the driver on the approach to the roundabout. Well, as a driver, I, I see my role as looking for other vehicles, pedestrians, uh, the actual road safety signage rather than advertising. I also just think that in general, um, sort of commercialising all, all, all these sort of spaces. It just um, it, it makes areas look a little bit down market um, as the signage ages and, and becomes um, tatty looking or, or you know dented because it's been struck by a vehicle. So just in, in general, um, I know that they they may well be policy compliant, but uh, I, I personally disagree with them on, on mainly on safety grounds because it's distracting for drivers. Thank you, Mark. Very good comments. Thank you. Anybody else like to speak? Mark? Yeah, I support it. And I, uh, I want to remind Mike Ishwood that some of us do take passengers when we go places and they might like to look at the signs. So uh, it's not just about us, Mike. <laughs> the officer said drivers. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anyone wants to go with the ball on you, anyways. Mike, you're taking my interviews. You would like to add in fact, you should have chair. Thanks, thank you. Thank you. Um, just, to, just like there, there are some like roundabouts, I know, you know unofficial signs, yeah. um, and I get a bit cross sometimes that they're not make, that, that they're not taken down. And mm -hmm. I wonder, perhaps you know, along with this, we can yes, they can be properly maintained and unofficial signs can be removed. I totally agree. They used to be taken down. You bet it's not it's gone. Or not. I think you the liberal Democrat. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in, in relation to these applications we're considering, if there are any signs on the roundabouts, we are proposing a condition that will actually allow for their removal. Um, I mean, if there are other signs on other roundabouts that are potentially unauthorised, then 
certainly get in contact with the highways team we will be able to address that matter yeah thanks very much so yeah we have a proposal yeah yeah it's just Mr. Chair. Is there, as i understand it there's it's just time limited so that these signs that we've bring to today they will come up for review and if they're found to be a problem they will then be removed and that would possibly be sure of like yeah, I mean, they, they have a, a limit of five years, um, after which time we have to review whether they're in a fit, a fit state. Um, once again, um, if a business isn't renewing their 12 month contract for the signage, then their signage will be taken off. Um, new signage will be put onto it, so they will be maintained. Can I? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Well, Josh wants to tell you, so. question. Um, I'm left confused. Did they belong to Highways England? Or did they belong to Shopshire Council or the yeah, Highways? Um, it can be Shopshire Council. They're all Shopshire Council. Let's be around yeah. about we've got. Yeah. Okay, I think it might be an issue actually that scrutiny could look at and what's happening with our roundabouts and what we should be using them for and what can go on there. I know over the years, uh, at one point, somebody wanted to put the knife angel on Mile End roundabouts and um, the Camden Railway, I think, at one point wants to put a train on the roundabout. And I think it is something worth looking at and looking what should happen with our roundabout. Yeah. So I think I might take that forward. Oh, much as members are willing to, on the scrutiny committee, sign the roundabout. Oh. Good point, so I'd like to be mm -hmm. bad with mine. Mm -hmm. um, can I just ask if it's not commercially sensitive information, how much uh, income will this generate? The, sign or put around about roughly speaking i'm unaware of the actual costs that would be provided and that's a commercial development so it's, it's not something hard to be considered as part of the planning process um there will be different prices for different roundabouts um, and that will depend on the the, the, the traffic that, that generates a roundabout you know the more busy roundabout will probably have a higher value than a roundabout that's less frequented that's all right mike i the same questions from all <laughs> So if that, no more. All those in favour? Except for Michael. Yeah, OK. And you are against it. Yes. Yeah. OK. Thank you. Right. Hot knit. Hot knit. The next um, uh, issue is the Hot Knit Roundabout and just on the approach to the, the bypass around Hot Knit. Um, once again, this is a, a large, relatively flat roundabout, um, a number of street furniture on the roundabout and surrounding it. Um, uh, we have had uh, concerns, I think, from the Parish Council regarding the roundabout and highway safety grounds, um, that they may well restrict visibility for drivers. Um, just to confirm that these signs will be less than a metre high off the ground. Um, in relation to highway safety matters, um, 900 millimetres a metre is normally the, 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 the basis of what's acceptable for a vehicle driver to be able to look at, across um, an obstruction. Um, so in relation to that and together with existing landscaping on it, the, the highways authority feel there isn't a concern in relation to that. And officers um, consider the site to be acceptable and um, recommend approval for this application. Thank you, Richard. And on this application, there are four signs on each of the approach roads. So just clarify, so four signs on each of the approach routes. So it's four, yeah, eight, it, it, yeah, 12, yeah, signs on there. Not one spot. No, what, four, four individual sponsorship signs on the roundabout. All oh, right, okay, fine. On each. Yeah, one, right. it just sounds like we're going four on every entrance. Oh, no, no, good point. No, 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 no. One, one sign on the approach to each um, yeah. of the roundabout. Thank yes. you. Thank you. I'm trying to clarify that. Let me get worried then. Right. Oh. So I'll do this and I'll go recommendation. This this is an on a not very busy road at all. It's a big roundabout with big entrances, big exits. I'm very happy with this for the officer recommendation. I'll second you. Motion seconds. Any comments? All those in favour, please show. Thank you, Mike. Okay. Fuse. Yep, yeah, okay. You might have a good day. Uh, the next application is for four sponsorship signs on the Shrewsbury Road roundabout in Oswestry. Street. This is on the main approach leading into the town. Um, the roundabout is relatively newly constructed and was provided to serve the new Martin supermarket. Um, a number of business premises that are located along this stretch of road which have signage, it's a commercial area entering into the town. Um, once again, highways officers have raised no objection and planning officers um, support this application. 
Thank you, Richard. Mike. Uh, on this one, I, I would like to propose refusal because um, it, there is already a significant amount of signage along Shrewsbury Road. There will be more when um, a McDonald's, is, which has been given planning permission, is built just to the right of the roundabout on the on the um, location plan. Um, which will have a lot of signs along the roadside. There's already industrial at uh, the, the edge of the industrial estate further up with um, a lot of roadside signs. There's the Morrison's petrol station, which has a significant number of roadside signs, um, supermarkets further up um, and not shown on this photograph, but it has recently uh, been made really attractive with um, floral planting in the middle of the roundabout. Uh, it's an important gateway into the town and I do just think it would be, uh, we are meant to take into account the cumulative effect of signage, um, which I just think that putting them on this roundabout uh, will be too much at this location, um, considering all the other signage that's been given approval. So I propose that we uh, refuse this particular one. Yes, Trish. Um, I come from a totally different viewpoint, uh, surprisingly to Councillor Isherwood. I think the large uh, roundabout that actually signed that sign will be lost on us, and I don't think it will interfere with any displays that are there already. Thank you. Right. Yeah. I'm happy to second that Councillor Isherwood just go to Devil Nook, really. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about it. Any more comments on this? We have a first and a second. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, um, <laughs> <laughs> at the same time, Edward and David. Just a question of clarification, really. Uh, I think you referred to on the previous one, the Wichich one, I think it was, that there was a, an authorised signage on this on the right. This is a fairly new one, I know. But I mean, I would like to get rid of all unauthorised signage because then. This would simply put a sign in place that we've agreed to rather than just ad hoc signage going up. So is there any to be taken down here on this one? Uh, I'm, I'm not aware of any formalised signs that have been sort of uh, entered into the ground. The, the one that which was a proper shops council sign. Um, obviously on this one you can see it's some yellow um, placard that's been put onto the um, Chevron. Um, once again, anything like that, that would be removed. So anything that's sort of um, unauthorised, then that would be removed. So an antique sale on last week. Oh, I'm sorry, sorry. Thanks. And yeah, I'm going to support uh, Councillor issues on this one because I know that I will. And there are there's going to be a lot of signs around there, and there's an important entrance into the hospital. So um, I think I don't think I support this one. Thank you. Any comments from the officers on that before we? Um, I'm, this is a different matter about that with thoughts. Actually, this is an entrance into Oswestry rather than on the bypass. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, it's got. Sorry, is it's, that? It's, it's mean. Oh, it's, 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 it's got three public highway accesses on to it, but the fourth one is from a supermarket. Yes. Uh, it was put in in order to enable the supermarket. Uh, is there any mileage do members consider that maybe a reduction in signs is needed here? Uh, they're proposing four, I believe, aren't they? Yes, that's correct. Just a thought. Just a thought. Any comments on that? I have a normal thing to say. That particular round, because I know it so well, I mean, I don't do it, I'm sure Mike does. Um, I think anybody who tries to put a sign on that roundabout is asking to be run over. <laughs> it's a bit frank. It is such a busy it, Mike? It's, it's, it's yeah. such a busy roundabout that really you, you need help. And it is illegal to put signs like that and that people can be prosecuted. Absolutely. Right, yeah, we've proposed in a second here. Can we just do this one? Mm, I think we better have. Yeah. Thank you, Chair. So the proposal is to refuse uh, this for the reasons given by Councillor Isherwood. So are you for or against that proposal? Councillor Barrow? Against. Okay. Uh, Councillor Elner? Presentation's gone. Against. Councillor Clark? For. Mm. Oh. Councillor Jones? 
I'll go four. Four for Kaiser. Yeah. Kaiser is sure. Four. Councillor Towers. On this occasion, I'll go four. Councillor Vasma. Four. Councillor Wynne. Four. That proposal is carried, Chair. <laughs> now, where are we now? Done. Oh, turn down. Just tell me you've got to do the back. Yeah, no, it's probably turn down. Oh, technical issues. Oh, technical issues. Yeah, yeah, that's it. We all know what turn down looks like. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. This, yeah, this application is once again is for four sponsorship signs on the Turnhill roundabout, um, which is just two kilometres southwest of Market Drayton. Um, it's a, a smaller roundabout than we've already considered. Um, there are two existing Shropshire Council um, signs on the roundabout. Um, once again, these have been in situ for over six years. Uh, and we've received no complaints um, or requests for their removal. Um, the roundabout um, has a number of businesses close by. There's a petrol station with advertisement, uh, a farmhouse, bed and breakfast, uh, and another other, number of other buildings. Um, it's quite a busy junction and roundabout, um, and officers consider that the visual impact is minimal and the highways manager has raised no objection to this application also um, the application has been recommended for approval thank you we do have some comments from the local member which man will read out thank you chair we have a statement from councillor rob gittins he states residents have raised concerns about the advertising wars on the turnhill roundabout connecting the a41 to the a53 it is felt that these boards are an unnecessary distraction to an already unsafe roundabout. The roundabout is small and busy and cars on the inside lane are very often clipped due to the tightness of the turning circle and having advertising boards on this roundabout will simply distract attention away from keeping road users safe. Thank you very much. Um, I have my hand at first, as I said, so I'll go back. No, in my mind, I did. <laughs> So yeah, just this roundabout is very busy. Well, there is just trunk roads in the country. The roundabout is exceptionally small. It's one one vehicle into each one, which all the rest, the big roundabouts, have two and less traffic. That's right. Single. This is a very busy one. There's already two on there, isn't there, Richard? Yeah, there's um, two signs already. If you look at the two photographs on the right hand That's side, it. yeah, um, you'll see the sign just to the right of the black and white Chevron sign. OK, and that those signs are of a similar scale to what's been And they're official, they are official, are they? They haven't received planning permission. Oh, or right. advertisement consent. So they are Shropshire Council signs, yes. Right. <laughs> oh. So, so, um, yeah. 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 Anyway, I'm not over happy with this, but I'll let, I'll let you speak first. Ted's first. Hey, uh, Jeff. Um, I'm not very familiar with this site. I was the old days when I was uh, driving for a living and that was a tremendous turn here. Uh, what, what we all know that it used to make the frog star on a regular basis and we're talking really serious accidents so I'm very reluctant to support this one and think that we should reject it. Right Jeff? Yeah in fact I agree I was going to propose we do a bit because it's a small diameter roundabout. It's already got two signs on six to it's too many. It's going to cause um, impairment of vision, health and safety issues to the effect. And the only reason I'd go and actually accept it is if Shropshire Council got land permission or didn't get land permission, took the two down, whatever. So it shouldn't be there in the first place. But six is too many. Just just to clarify, it wouldn't be six. Um, the two existing signs will be removed. And I four no signs. Uh, well, I do apologise if you've been misunderstood yet, but two existing signs will be removed and four new signs will be replaced. I think that's an object. Right, they've been there for five years, haven't they? In, in excess of six years, yes. Six years. I'm going to, oh, go on then. Okay. okay. Uh, I have to say that we've lost youths and young lives in where on several occasions this roundabout is very yeah. big in health and safety terms. So I would want to support a rejection of this. Thank you. Right, okay. I was thinking about sort of uh, conditioning to two. Oh. Okay. 
maybe help them. Well, I those are forward to go against the abstract recommendation. Yes. Okay. Second it, no? Yeah. Second it, Ed. Edward? Second. Just, I mean, we'll speak as soon we have a thingy on it. Go and call. Let me actually go to the declaration. Sorry? What are we voting on? We are voting on the Office of Recommendation for no signage on the ground. Against against. 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 Thank you, Chair. So the proposal that you have put forward is to refuse the application against officer recommendation for the reasons you have outlined only related to highway safety at this very small busy roundabout. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. I am voting for that. So I shall shall I do the roll call vote as before on this one? Okay, yeah. so this is item 11. Okay, uh, Councillor Barrow? Paul. Councillor Elner? I'm going to not have any signs on this. Councillor like Clark? Paul. Councillor Jones? Paul. Councillor Isherwood? Paul. Councillor Towers? Paul. Councillor Plasma? Paul. Councillor Wynn? Paul. Is it a unanimous <laughs> 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 Sorry, it's it must be more eloquent. It's tidy as a bit. I'm not really as well. Yeah. Right, uh, item 12, Grand High Church in Chester Road and Bar Gates with Church Shropshire. Yeah, like this is the, the final one of the, the advertisement boards. we will be happy to hear. Um, this is uh, a roundabout on the approach into Whitchurch Town Centre. Um, access from Chester Road and Tartley Road. Uh, it's mainly grassed with a, a box hedging um, in the centre of the, the, the site. Um, concerns have been raised by um, the local ward member indicating this is a residential area. Um, visual impact on the, the location and uh, it's in close proximity to the adjacent conservation area. Uh, the site is actually over 70 metres away from the edge of the conservation area uh, and over 130 metres away from the nearest sort of historic building within the town centre. Uh, officers consider that these are low profile signs um, which would not detract from the area. Uh, and consider the provision of three signs on this roundabout would be acceptable. Um, once again, the highways manager has raised no objection on highway safety grounds, and this application has been recommended for approval. Thank you, Richard. Uh, I assume the town council maintain that roundabout, do they? Yes, they do. Um, I have to do it today. They do a very, very good job of it. It looks really nice and it would be shame to spoil it with any signs whatsoever, and I think it should be the town council. Right, I mean, yeah, I guess quite well. Um, it's a nice roundabout. Which church town look after it and spend £2,260 looking after every year? Um, if the science comes down, it does do a bank account, structure counts. But that's not a planning concern. I'll just point this out. Um, it's inside the church. It's the only green roundabout we've got in the church. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a nice roundabout. It's a pretty nice roundabout. I think it'd be shamed when not there, personally. But obviously, other people have my different ideas. So, just you propose. I will propose. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But, Jeff, I'd like to second Joyce's. Oh, okay. thank you, Jeff. Uh, any more comments? Uh, the planning reasons are because it's very close to the historic town and. Uh, it's uh, kept by Whitchurch and they will come. That's not planning concerns. The right. The roundabout looks, they looked after, they it's looked after the roundabout. Out of keeping to the area that it's in. Out of keeping to that particular area that it's in. Oh, so just to say, it's only single uh, highway carriageway out onto this roundabout, isn't it? Yes. So it's like the turn hill one. <laughs> yeah, right. I didn't say too much. Any grounds for appeal, Philip? <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Any grounds for appeal? 
Oh, he's trying to be yes, clear. Yeah. Uh, I, I just like to point out, it's in a conservation area, though, so if you're going to refuse, you need to be very careful about your reasons for refusal. The fact that it's a pretty roundabout, and it will get very far. Well, at 70 metres, I think, the old Bargate School. That's less than 70 yeah, Well, it's, it's visual impact, then. Are you considering... The visual impact of a very sensitive area. Why is it sensitive? Because of the historic history of the Bargate's there. But it's not a conservation area, can't it, Mr. Chair? But, but there's some very, very nice old buildings there. You might think that, but it's not designated. Can I ask a question? Has there been many accidents on that road? Yes. Yeah, sure. That's a good question. <laughs> from, from, an from my perspective, I'm not aware of any. Um, the highways manager was consulted on this application as they have been on all of the applications and they would have access to that sort of data if there was a, a, a major issue with a particular location. Can we bring this one back and get information on, on that and I was too painful. Okay. So you don't think you can refuse it on highway grounds? I think we're struggling with that. Just yeah, struggling. Yeah. Can I just ask that is the diameter of this round about a lot smaller than the other ones? Yeah. Well, this is really Just want to say, Mr. Chair, this this roundabout, I know it well as well. I know all these people in the north. Uh, this is banked. You have to watch yourself if you go as you rise up to Chester Road as you yeah. come in from the the, Witch, yeah. uh, the, the, the Cheshire side. It's it's banking. There's this uh, green main force stuff against houses on the left hand side. You come down, so it's actually quite a tricky roundabout. You concentrate there. It's it's a quick round of that, yeah, yeah. Do you do you consider visual visual impact on the on the fact that it's it's you, you somebody pointed point out earlier it was a well maintained roundabout. It's a well maintained. Yeah, roundabout. Do you think there's a visual impact on the existing character of the roundabout? That could be a. Well, I think that's a good one. Thank you. Right. Yeah, I, I was going to say, can we refuse just on on the grounds of visual impact alone? Within the, well, within the facility of the central which I, I think because of the other signs, you'll have to be very careful, I worry, but uh, what I've noticed with this one is this one's got the landscape knowledge in the in the box hedging and which is in the centre. <laughs> you might think it's, it, 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 it'll detract from that, so Not that could, uh, could be a reason, whereas the other roundabouts are, um, are mainly grassed or low, low maintained. Mm -hmm. Well, the other round about nothing, which is grass. Yeah, well, what I'm trying to say is this, 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 one, has got, an this on. one has got veg plantings on it, and you may think it'll be visually detracted, detractive to the setting of the landscape that's already on, on the roundabout. Thank you. Yeah, that's yeah. Thank you very much. People aren't going to appear to the so, sorry, and, and is it something like that that they kind of work with on there? There's no longer be maintained by the town council, and therefore would not be. I saw Danny's nerve there, Ali. Nobody wouldn't be. I know, they're vegetable. Stop, Danny, sir. Unfortunately. I'm getting lost. <laughs> okay, we've got to close the second. Then. Um, through you, Chair, there's just two points. I think you're you're dealing with the issue of the landscaping and the um, the visual impact, as um, Philip has pointed out to you. And um, I noticed the councillor owner asked about uh, the possibility of an appeal. Uh, I am bound to point, point out to you that in law, um, as this is an application by Shropshire Council, they can't appeal. Oh, oh thank you. But we just want to get some reasons there. Uh, have we got enough reasons there? You do still need proper reasons, so you are going to Yeah, so, so have we got enough reasons there in your yeah. opinion? Uh, yes, I would say so with the land theatre, but I, what I'm concerned about here, Miranda's quite right in what she pointed out, uh, my experience earlier this morning. Uh, however, uh, we've got to be seen to be consistent because there are objections to some of the others, so you need to be seen to be treating them all fairly. And this one, like we've already pointed out, does have a soft last year. Yes. Okay, right. I think you can take a vote on it. You better have a record, a roll call vote again, please. So, through you, Chair, the proposal is to refuse this application on the basis of the reasons that have been discussed and summarised by Philip Mullineux for you. 
Okay, so you're either, either you for or against the refusal. Councillor Barrow. Four. Councillor Elder. Four. Councillor Clark. Four. Councillor Jones. Four. Councillor Isherwood. Four. Councillor Towers. Four. Councillor Basma. Four. Councillor Wynne. Four. That's unanimous, chair. Thank you. In other words, that would be chair. Yeah, man, you got him. He said he did care. I think he was nice. He didn't put his hands back. Anyway, moving on. Sorry, let's move on. Time tradition. Um, it is item thirteen, which is proposed extension of his dwelling north of. Barrington will go near the structure. And who is presenting this? It's Mark. Have a word or possibly. No, no, no. no, no. Don't worry about this one. Brandon, is it that the Kate Thompson now is going to support what's in the new area? Yes, you are. Yes. Well, no, you just uh, uh, all the information you receive, and what it says is the stuff that I have to be there for when this is done. Okay, Jim. The post office is an hour that we saw that was in the same spot. Yes. 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 Right, this application is for the uh, erection of a central agricultural uh, work as well in connection with. Uh, uh, Merrington Fishery and uh, Bowyer Heath. Uh, yesterday, late yesterday, we did receive um, details. Uh, I think we received, uh, submitted late yesterday, and we've received them this morning. Uh, details of accounts of the, of the business uh, from the applicants' uh, accountants. And unfortunately, owing to the sort of the timings, we haven't had an opportunity to thoroughly consider those. Um, so the officer recommendation is that the application is deferred to provide more time for that to be considered. Um, despite that, we do still have concerns about the um, functional need for the agricultural workers dwelling on this site. Um, but so, yeah, we do need more time to consider the financial aspect of, of the scheme and therefore the recommendations for deferral. Thank you, Mark. Well, let's go to the applicant and the agent. This is coming late. They haven't had time to look at it. It's up for refusal. Would you, would you be happy for it to be deferred? We would be happy for it to be deferred, but the same information was submitted as part of the application in terms of the accounts. The officer in the report in question there, they weren't verified or certified. So in yes, submitting it yesterday, it wasn't any new information, it was just confirmation of that they were certified accounts. So they're full full accounts that have been submitted yesterday as opposed to extracts. So but happy to happy for it to be considered revisited if that's what it is. Right, okay. This item is deferred. You think, Jane, you need to just get the committee to... Oh, so, so we need to propose them... Uh, an right, I propose we defer this application. Second. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. All those in favour? Yeah. 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 This item is deferred, thank you very much. Sorry about that, but let's get it right. OK, thank you. Moving on to... Right, item 14. That's of the rear of Jason Sue, and Shaggy Okay, who's been presenting next? Yes. Me. Thank you. Me. Right, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just get to get the slide up. Uh, that one did cause us some confusement. Uh, big thanks. I, did, we didn't know about, I didn't know about them until after our briefing this morning. I went back to my desk and there they were. Yeah. Right, first of all, right, this application is similar to uh, two that were brought to committee last month for telecom shelters uh, uh, on, on, on council land, hence the reason they need to come to committee. Uh, the application is made in full and proposes, like I say, erection of tele telecom shelter with fencing on land to the rear of a scout hut adjacent to the Rad Valley Gardens, Shrewsbury. Uh, there are no updates. Application is presented to committee, as I say, because of the council scheme of delegation in that the application site is council on land and the proposal is not considered a statutory function. Uh, site location plan. 
the site is outlined in red on here. Uh, that's the uh, elevations in floor plans. Uh, fencing, security fencing around it. And now a couple of photographs of where the site is. As you can see, lock up garages. Lots of traffic. And uh, that's where the site is going, there in the corner. Uh, and that's another side of the land. Precisely. However, application is for development of of the to house telecom housing communication telecommunication equipment in order to provide broadband improvement to the surrounding households. There are no objections to the proposal, and the recommendation is one of approval, subject to conditions as set out in Appendix One, and that no objections does include the local town council. Thank you. That uh, concludes my presentation, Mr. Chair. Who's this one? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Officer recommendation. All those in favour of recommendation. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Right, item 15, appeal and appeal decisions. Any comments from uh, any planning officers? No. Very no. quiet this one, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Any comments from anybody else on the committee? In that case, that's done. Item 16, dates the next meeting. To note, the Milton Bank meeting is held on 2 o'clock on Tuesday, 19th of July 2022. In that case, I'll close the meeting. Thank you very much for your attendance and, uh, yeah, interesting meeting. Oh.